Nick, I'm interested because again, you know, small studio. Um, you know, you really you really have to sort of focus your energy at very key po points in the process. What when you when you're first looking at that very beginning of the idea, what, how do you sort of go about setting up an effective pipeline or workflow? Um, well, I was quite like working the department I worked at in London was the the kind of handheld mobile division. Like before mobile phone games, it was called the mobile division, um, and my creative director at that point was really, really strong on um, kind of prototyping and brainstorming. So the big thing we try and do um, is, uh, first of all, work out what we're making. So I'm going to make a game, um, and this is what it's going to be, and this is hopefully what the, tar the target platforms are going to be. Uh, and then we'll identify like the key components that maybe we have no experience of or that are really, really important to the game, and then we'll try and prototype them really, really quickly. So I think you've mentioned already, or it's been touched upon, is that like fail fast. Everything about our business is about, like everything we do is about failing really, really quickly. Because if the more, mis more mistakes, obviously we don't want to make mistakes, but the more we can kind of make those mistakes early, they're really cheap when they happen at the start. If you go nine months and you've made a game and you're like, we can't do anything with this, yeah. I've got to bin it, that's like an awful lot of work. So we, <laughs> and a lot of money. So we try, and, we try and fail quickly, we try and do a lot of prototypes, and then from there, we'll try and get the pipelines out of that. So with, with Blast and Bunnies, and we knew we, we had to scale up, so we've got 3DS, which is a very low-powered machine, so the, the bunnies can't look really, really super detailed, and then the PlayStation 4, which is just insanely powerful, and they're all going to look curvy and sexy and you know, have loads of different lighting techniques on them. Um, so I, I'm the one modeling them. I, I don't want to model each bunny five or six times, because that's just going to take forever. So we worked out a pipeline that allowed me to model them in low detail, but um, up res them really, really well and have um, simple texture sets that we could remap really, really easily. So that, all came, that's, that was a prototype. We, like, we mm. prototyped that on one bunny to see if it would work and then went from there. Yeah. Um, and we do that with a lot of, lot of the, the, the technology. And, it's, and obviously it's really important that you, you know, had a global view at the beginning to yeah. know that you were going to need to do that yeah. so, and, and sort of build that workflow in there. Yeah. Um, we, I'm going to get a question from, from our tweeter. Unashamedly creative. Hello. Okay. Uh, one thing that hasn't been addressed is you simply don't have three years to build a game. This is a rapid fire industry. Well, you do because we did it, right? <laughs> so it's like when we're doing it. Um, it's you make your own. Like this is a, this is what I was saying. Like we we structured our business so that we have three years. Like I've worked in game development. Like, like we we prototyped our game on paper for eight months. That's nuts. Like who does that, right? Um, I, and that was coming from a studio where I would get told about a project. As a design director, I would get told about a project. I'm like, all right, what's the timeline? They were like, well, start writing the GDD because people are making assets. And it's like, you know, <laughs> oh, and you're God. racing the development team to actually figure out what the game is. Um, so it's about the, the, the space that you carve out for yourself and the production. Like, there's no, there's no rule book written. It's not like the industry's moving forward and is going to leave you behind. It will only do that if you let it. Um, and so what we did at League of Geeks was, like I said, we come from... We, I, I, I strongly believe that these sort of creative problems and stuff like, well, what if the market moves and, you know, you've got to act on things quickly, I'm going to address them. So, and we talk a lot about this. So there is opportunity um, cost of taking three years instead of six weeks at, um, on our Mello. And we talk about this internally. But we have, let's say we have five or 10 unique selling points or big things that mean our game could be successful on our Mello. And that might be particular big features like animated cards that other games don't have. Or it might be the fact that we're the highest quality digital board game, or, you know, best in genre sort of thing, and all these things. So let's just imagine we have 10 of them. As we move through development, the longer we take, we start to lose some. So animated cards, they're out there. Like Hearthstone does them. Um, there is another studio in Australia called Lightmare. They've done them. So we're not first to that. Um, the quality of digital board games on the App Store has skyrocketed. We actually, one of the major motivations for doing our Mellow is that it was disgusting how bad digital board games were on iPad. But now that's gone. Half stones out, like God, you know, that's, that's an amazing quality game. Um, so we may not have 10 big selling features, but maybe we have six, or maybe we have five. And that's still enough to sell a game and to launch a game. But we invested in our game to ensure that we made sure that we had 10 of those. Um, and I, I guess it's just one of those things where we set up the production model to ensure that if we need the time, we have it. And sometimes it hit, like the rubber hits the road and you just got to make things happen. Like we've been through intense crunch periods to hit things like PAX Prime deadlines so we can get into the mega booth and show our game or you know, trying to get into submissions for particular things or whatever. And now we've just done a Kickstarter and we have 6,000 people 
waiting for this game. We've told them it's going to come at a certain point and that they're going to get all these trinkets and goods and everything with it. And so we, we're now, like, this is where the rubber hits the road. So there are times where you can sort of dodge and weave around, like, particular things, and then there are times when you've got to make, make stuff happen. And, and I think it's about navigating that. Yeah, and I, I mean, we talked about it earlier about being agile, and I think the, the key to, to being agile is having that really strong foundation, which is you've got great processes, you've got great workflows, you've got a great team, and you, you have a really good process for brainstorming and getting from brainstorming to ac execution. And so, you know, for you, it, even though it's three... I mean, it's like overnight success, Kickstarter, yeah. but it's actually three years in the making. And I think the key thing for everyone here is that you've got to do the work first... And it might feel like it's taking a long time and you're losing your agility and you're losing opportunities as they go whizzing by, but if you really want to deliver something that's of a world-class standard, you're better off spending the time. Yeah, content is king. That's the, like, that's the biggest thing. If you can... It doesn't matter how long you take. Like, we could release Armello in 10 years, but if, it's, if our idea is executed to the ultimate level of quality and execution that it can be, then people will pick it up and people will play it. Yeah. Um, it's all about content, and I think we, we invest in that, and it shows itself um, in the opportunities that are presented yeah. to us just because of our commitment to quality. Yeah. I think that's, that's really true. I mean, I think content, you, if, if there is something that you have very strong conviction about, particularly for your game, that you want to hold back, know that even though there's special markets and special timing, particularly for content, uh, you're going to have hit games come out at any time. Does that make sense? Like, you know, Supercell came up, you know, in 2000, at the end of 2013 with just some amazing games. Yeah. Um, so there, there's room, but there's only like two or three places at the top. But those things can change. 